good morning myself pushpendra singh and we are going to start with ncert classes okay and today you will have the sixth standard geography so we have this particular course which is uh, relevant to ncert classes so we'll have the ncert based coverage of those books all right in these classes and we are uh, covering the class by class right of those ncert books so today we will be having the sixth standard ncert class right so we are going to cover with the geography all right so let's begin with the geography classes all right okay so we have studied in our last class regarding uh, the maps regarding the atlas regarding the various features right now today we are going to start with the major domains of the earth okay so let's understand what is this major domains of the earth okay or what are these domains means okay so you must understand they are also called the components of environment okay so components of the environment means you can think of the environment basically consisting of the three main components okay they are nothing but the lithosphere atmosphere and hydrosphere so if you see here the lithosphere atmosphere and the hydrosphere okay lithosphere means it is the solid portion it is the solid portion so it is the second point is that the solid portion of the earth on which we live is called lithosphere so jis dharti pe hum log rehte hain that is also solid theek hai that portion of the earth is called lithosphere okay if you if you talk about the atmosphere means it is the gaseous form it is the gaseous form okay gaseous ka matlab hai you will have the oxygen you will have the nitrogen okay you have you will have the carbon dioxide so like that you will have the different gaseous you know constituents so they are called basically atmosphere okay and the third most important domain or the component is basically your hydrosphere hydrosphere means the sphere of the earth which is which is covered by the water or which is surrounded by the water is called hydrosphere इसमें आपके ओशंस आ जाएंगे ठीक है यू विल हैव द सीज एंड एक्सेट्रा ओके सो दे आर कॉल्ड हाइड्रोस्फेयर सो सॉलिड पोर्शन मतलब लिथोस्फेयर इन व्हिच वी लिव ठीक है गैसियस गैसियस एनवेलप वेयर वी यू विल हैव द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ गैसेस लाइक ऑक्सीजन नाइट्रोजन इट इज कॉल्ड एटमॉस्फेयर एंड द थर्ड डोमेन इज कॉल्ड हाइड्रोस्फेयर वेयर यू विल हैव द ओशंस एंड द सीज द जोन व्हिच कंटेन्स ऑल फ्रॉम द लाइट इज कॉल्ड बायोस्फेयर ओके so biosphere basically consisting of you know that sphere of the life where you you will find all form of the life okay including the human being so that sphere is called biosphere all right so i hope the definitions are clear okay so let's understand a bit detail about the lithosphere so lithosphere first of all as i said it is the solid it is the solid right it consisting of the solid you know portion of the earth it is a solid portion so when you say solid portion means it consisting of the rocks only the rocks can make the surface solid and it is basically you know the earth crust is also the solid and you will have the layers of the soil also all right and this combinedly consisting of your lithosphere so lithosphere is nothing but the crust and your the consisting of the part of the layers now there are two major divisions okay two major divisions let's say if if i draw one diagram okay you would be able to understand for example if this is a diagram this is the diagram you see if i draw if i let's say this is the water this is the domain of the water if i'm just making yeah, this domain okay and this is let's say for the ocean okay and this is let's say for continent okay now when i say the continent means that portion of the lithosphere or that portion of the land mass which basically comprises the continent okay or which is located on the continent are called basically nothing but the the lithosphere of the continent that means that means the land mass which is located on the on the on the basically that portion of the earth which is not covered by the bottom body it is nothing but you know that portion of the continent or that portion of the lithosphere which is also known as continent okay and there will be a huge portion of the water body they are called oceanic basins okay so you will have this oceanic basins and and you you must also understand 
you will have this lithosphere also. You will have this lithosphere also, and you will have this lithosphere also. And this upper portion is called basically crust. The upper portion is called also called crust. And below that, you will have the different layers. For example, below the below the crust, you will have basically the you know the the different layer which is called mantle, which is called mantle. And then you will have the also mantle. For example, you will have the upper mantle and you will have the lower mantle. Okay. And then you will have the core, upper core, and you will have the lower core. core. All right. So you will have the different, you will have the different, you know, the layers of the earth, which are also known as the crust, mantle, and the core. Right. So these are the different layers of the earth. Okay. Let's understand the continents. Okay. Now, when we say the continent means you must understand there are the different plates which are which are covered the lithosphere part. Okay, these are nothing but the continental plates, and there are seven such major continents, right? Uh, which are basically you know uh, which are basically built or which are basically existed on these seven major plates. Okay, now when you say the northern hemisphere, I already told you through the diagram. That the equator, the equator which divide the Earth into two portion. All right, the northernmost portion is called the northern hemisphere, which is this portion. The southern portion is called southern hemisphere. But when you see the world map, you will find that the greater part of the landmass lies in the northern hemisphere. That means greater part of landmass means the continental mass. The continental mass. Which is consisting of the solid earth, right? Which is more in the northern hemisphere, and and in the southern hemisphere you will have more ocean. You will have more oceans reliant, but in the northern hemisphere you will have more continent, more continent. All right. So this is what is something you must understand. And when you say in the northern hemisphere, you will have basically. you know the asia which is the largest continent in the northern hemisphere okay and uh, the word which is flashing is called eurasia the eurasia ka matlab hota hai the europe plus asia the europe plus asia that means the eurasia is consisting of the europe and the asia okay these are the two different continental mass and the combined mass is called eurasia okay and uh after the asia which is the largest continent the africa is the second largest continent on the earth okay and and it is the only continent through the tropic of cancer equator and the tropic of capricorn passes so when you say this african continent right uh they are the there are the imaginary lines for example you will have this equator that is 0 degree you will have this tropic of cancer that is 23 and a half degree north then you will have tropic of cap tropic of capricorn that is 23 and a half degree south so the africa is one such continent where you will have the equator tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn all these three lines used to all these three lines used to pass through the continent of africa and after asia followed by after asia followed by right uh, the africa you will have the north america which is the third largest continent of the world and you must understand there is also called the word called isthmus isthmus ka matlab hota hai right uh, a narrow strip of the land which ultimately connects the two the two you know the land mass for example uh so for example isthmus of panama okay so where the south america and north america are linked by this narrow strip of land which is called the isthmus of panama the isthmus of panama if you see if you see the world map you will be easily identifying the isthmus of panama which ultimately connects the north america and south america by this narrow stretch of or this narrow strip of land okay and when you compare with all the continents the australia is the smallest continent the australia is the smallest continent and it is also called an island continent also why it is called island continent because australia's location because australia's location lies in between in between the ocean in between the ocean which means which means 
it is also called the island continent because it, its size is much much higher that it do not correspond into the island but but it is located within the ocean and its size is so much bulky that it correspond to the continent so we call it this as the island continent okay and the antarctica is a permanently covered with thick ice sheets with thick ice sheets okay so you have the arctic region for example if i draw the the map of uh, the world map of the earth you will have this you know the prime meridian then you will have this north pole and you will have this south pole so here if you see the map you will have this antarctica antarctica so it is also a continent you must understand but it is permanently ice covered or you will have the thick ice sheets on the uh, on the on the continent of antarctica and india also has a research station which is also known as maitri and dakshin gangotri at antarctica okay so these research stations are set up and established by the government of india for further research and the developmental activities right to 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 study the the region of the antarctica so two such research stations are known as maitri and dakshin gangotri these two research stations are located at antarctica right let's understand hydrosphere so as i told you hydrosphere means is that part of the earth which is covered by which is covered by the water which is covered by the water and that part of the earth is called hydrosphere and you must also understand that more than 71% of the earth is covered with the water more than 70% of the earth and therefore the earth is called blue planet why the earth is called blue planet because you must understand when you look the earth from the atmosphere or from the uh, from the from the space the earth would look like a blue planet because of the predominance of the water on the surface of the earth because the earth surface covered you know around 71% of the earth is covered by the water itself and you must understand when you compare all water 97% of the earth water is found in the oceans is found in the oceans so which is also most important factor that among all 100% water 97% are found in the ocean itself okay now let's understand the oceans let's understand the oceans the oceans are that portion of the earth which is predominantly very very extensive and which are predominantly covered by the water so there are four major oceans on the earth and which are named as pacific ocean the atlantic ocean the indian ocean and the arctic ocean right so these are the four different oceans which are found on the which are found you can find out easily on the map of the world okay and the among all these four uh, oceans the pacific ocean is the largest ocean okay the atlantic ocean which is also in the s shaped which is the second largest ocean okay the indian ocean is the only ocean which is named after the country and that is india so this indian ocean basically covered right the indian peninsula from the both the sides right from the east and west also in the southern portion also the indian ocean also covered so it is named only after the country which is the india and arctic ocean is located within the arctic circle so this arctic ocean right so if i draw so this is basically north pole this is south pole and the arctic ocean will be over there so it is located within the arctic circle so we will have the arctic circle for example this is 0 degree equator this is 23 degree and half degree north this is 23 degree and half degree south it is 66 and half degree north and and it is you know your arctic circle which is the arctic ocean is also lying within the arctic circuit itself let's understand the atmosphere so atmosphere means that sphere which is predominantly covered by the gas the gas so you must understand the atmosphere protect us from the harmful effect of the sun rays right so atmosphere you will have the ozone gas you will have the ozone gas in stratosphere in the stratosphere okay stratosphere is nothing but a layer of the atmosphere which consisting of the ozone layer which protect us from the harmful rays of the sun rays which are also called ultraviolet rays which are also called ultraviolet rays 
now the atmosphere which we are talking about they are extending up to the 1600 kilometers from the surface of the earth now this atmosphere is predominantly consisting of the five layers the first layer is called troposphere the second layer is called stratosphere the third layer is called mesosphere the fourth layer is called thermosphere and the fifth layer is called exosphere so these are the layers that means if you move from the earth you will have the first layer that is called th that is called troposphere the second la second layer is called stratosphere the third layer, layer is called mesosphere the fourth layer is called thermosphere and the fifth layer is called exosphere so these are the layers right of the atmosphere once you move out from the earth surface the atmosphere is mainly consisting of the nitrogen and oxygen you know 21% of the composition belongs to the oxygen and around 71 78% belongs to the nitrogen and remaining percentages are basically covered by another gases okay let's understand the biosphere so as i told you it is that portion of the earth where the all form of the life is found so here you will have the all form of the life is found all form of the life is found now this biosphere is a narrow zone which is ultimately the the contact between the land water and the air it is ultimately the contact between the land water and air now when you say the all living organism including the humans are linked to each other to the biosphere for the survival so when you say it is that portion of the uh, you know the the domain of the earth where the life forms are formed that means here the all organism are linked to each other for their survival and that is how this biosphere is meant to be okay now the organism in the biosphere may be broadly divided into the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom okay the plant kingdom we call them we call them basically you know the community which is predominantly consisting of the plants and the animal where the predominant community is basically consisting of animals so you will have flora and fauna so this is basically flora flora and this is basically your fauna okay which is predominantly consisting of animal and this increasing amount of co2 leads to increasing global temperature now what is happening is that the co2 is one such anthropogenic gases anthropogenic okay anthropogenic means it is released from the human activities now this is also the most potent greenhouse gas now once you once you liberate the co2 gas now what will happen it will basically absorb absorb the temperature okay and it will ultimately absorb the heat okay and ultimately it will increase the temperature and which is basically causing the hike in the global temperature all right and this is termed as global warming so global warming nothing but the the proportion or the blanket of the gaseous particles which basically absorb the heat which is basically you know uh, are also called the terrestrial radiations the radiations which are which are you know emitted from the earth because you must understand you have two types of radiation one is called insulation insulation ka matlab hota hai that radiation which is coming from the sun so that is called insulation insulation they are called short wave radiations okay the radiations which are emitted from the earth after receiving this insulations they are also called long wave radiations and they are also called terrestrial radiation terrestrial terrestrial means which is related to earth so terrestrial radiations now they are called long wave radiations now you must understand our atmosphere is the most transparent for this insulation but it is opaque to the terrestrial radiations that means the atmosphere basically absorb some amount of terrestrial radiations which basically increases the temperature of the earth as this blanket would further increase the temperature the earth is only planet where the human beings find the three life sustaining elements which are land water and the air okay so you must understand we need the land to serve land to stay we need the water to drink we need the air to breathe so all these three sustaining elements are found on the earth and that is why the human human habitation are found the surface of the earth is a complex zone here three main components of the environment are lithosphere atmosphere and the hydrosphere 
meet and overlap and interact so that is how we we call it uh, uh, the habitable zone okay and as i told you already the lithosphere is basically nothing but the solid portion of the earth where we live the atmosphere is that portion of the earth which is a gaseous layers or gaseous envelope which is surrounding the earth surface okay and which are predominantly consisting of the various gases for example nitrogen around 78% oxygen 21% you will have the different type of gases particle like carbon dioxide and other inert gases like argon neon krypton xenon right so all such gases are also found the hydrosphere as i told you is refers to those in domain of the water where you will have predominantly water and this is basically also lies on the earth surface the biosphere where you will have the narrow zone where we will have the land water and the air together and there all form of the life is found right so there the life exists over that and the earth surface can be divided into two that is continent and the ocean basin the continent which is the solid surface where the solid surface right so it is basically the large land mass of the earth and the ocean basins where you will have the large water bodies the large water body okay so these are the two surface divisions of the earth okay when you compare the the all peaks the mount everest which is the highest peak right which is 8848 meters above from mean sea level from mean sea level which is the highest peak in the world and you must understand there are different trenches also jaise peaks hote hai na us tarah in the oceans also you will have the deep trenches the deep trenches are of v shaped they are of v shaped so when you when you have just like you know normal uh, normal planar surface on the earth so in the in the in the oceanic you know bottom also you will have the rolling plane theek hai ocean ke andar bhi rolling planes hote hain during the rolling plane as you move you will found the deep deep trenches also these deep trenches from the ocean bottom it is uh, it is the greatest depth which is found in the pacific ocean and that trench is known as the mariana trench which is 11022 meters deep so it is it is even much more depth depth than the mount everest so you can see here this trench which is found in the pacific ocean which is the deepest trench in the world which is also known as the mariana trench which is found in pacific ocean and as i told you there are seven continents these are seven continents are nothing but the seven major plates once you graduate to the higher classes you will learn that the continents are lying on the plates and these are seven major plates and there are numerous minor plates and there are seven continents which are lying on these plates and such continents are asia europe africa north america south america australia and the antarctica they are nothing but the major plates they are nothing but the major plates but you can call in in your small classes since you are studying in the sixth standard so you can call them as a continent they are all seven continents all right and among the continents the asia is the largest continent while australia is the smallest continent the australia is also known as the island continent right because you must understand it is it is well qualified to be called an island but its size its bulky size right which is also among the continent which is the smallest continent so it is sometime called as island continent also because it is well correspond to uh, the definition of island okay then antarctica which is permanently frozen and which have the thick ice sheets also and hence the antarctica is not suitable for the human settlement but you will have the different research stations two such research stations are established by the by the government of india is also one is called maitri another is called basically just now we have seen the maitri and the another research station what we call right so there are two research stations which are basically established by the government of india in uh, on the antarctica and more than 71% of the earth is covered with the water and 29% is with the land so that means two third of the portion of the earth is covered by the water and when you say the water reliance 97% of such water lies in the oceans that means only 3% of the water lies in the in the in the water aquifers there lies in the say uh in the glaciers right because you must understand the fresh water i am talking the oceanic water is saline water which is not potable or which is not drinkable 
okay and ocean water is salty so there is no human human use unless you treat that water by some desalination systems right so uh, many such desalinate desalination systems have been set up for example in the chennai uh, there is there is acute shortage of the drinking water because there you will have the aquifers also become uh, contaminated they have become salty because of the excessive extraction of this you know potable water from the ground now this uh, saline aquifers have now been you know uh, excluded into the the you know potable aquifers and which has led to further you know the depletion of those water quality now there is no potable water in the chennai okay so there the government of tamil nadu has set up the desalination plants where you will have the rivers ozone you know systems and desalination systems which basically produce this water for the drinking purpose a large portion of the rest of the water is in the form of ice sheets and the glaciers right which are also right uh, can be found on the ground and it is only 0.03% of the water which is available as a fresh water and which is usable by the human being so apart from the water which is covered in the ice sheets glaciers which are not in the human uh, you know uh, the capability to use and which is not uh, you know usable by the human which is because it is in the form of ice sheets and the glaciers only 0.03% so you can think of these fresh water are in the form of lakes rivers and some sort of a ponds they are this is the only water which is amount to be 0.003% of the all fresh water which is basically which is basically there in in basically you know uh, in the form of the water which is also called the fresh water all right then there are four major oceans as i told you pacific atlantic indian and the arctic which is right which is in the order of their size which that means the pacific is the largest the atlantic is the second largest the indian is the third largest and the arctic ocean is the smallest oceans and indian ocean is the only ocean which is named after the country which is the india right and atmosphere is divided into five layers that i told you troposphere stratosphere mesosphere thermosphere and the exosphere okay and if you want to look into the composition of the atmosphere in terms of the percentage of the gases so you will have the highest percentage of gases nitrogen which is correspond to 78 percentage okay then you have the oxygen which consisting of 21% and other gases for example carbon dioxide right and then inert gases like argon neon krypton etc which other consisting of you know 1% of those gases the oxygen is most vital gas which is essential for our survival right for you know breathing purpose right so it is most essential for our life we cannot live without oxygen as you know and nitrogen is most essential for the growth of living organism so they basically use this nitrogen gas and uh, the carbon dioxide is also most essential can you can you can you uh, assume if carbon dioxide or these greenhouse gases would not would not would have not been present on the atmosphere what would have been happened the earth's maximum temperature in the day time would have gone to even the unsustainable limit in the night time it would have reached to the frozen limit so that means without greenhouse gases or without these you know uh, uh, the heat absorbing gases the earth habitation would not have been sustainable so they make the earth or they keeps the earth warm enough so that we can live on the earth all right and it is also essential for the plants because plants also use the process called photosynthesis to produce their carbohydrates and energy and biosphere is is the zone where the life exists all form of the life where you will found basically okay from tiny microbes and bacteria to the large mammals are found in the biosphere including the human being also and there is a close linkages between all these organisms right including the humans which are found in the biosphere region okay the organism in the biosphere are divided into plant kingdom and the animal kingdom they are called basically you know the flora and it is called fauna they are called flora and the fauna these three domains of the earth which interact with each other and affect with each other they are you know uh, when you say the hydrosphere lithosphere and the atmosphere they are continuously interacting with each other right uh, when you when you say in the corresponding to biosphere right uh, right for example one such example you can say that the industries which are located on the lithosphere but it pollutes the air 
okay so it's pollutes the air so that means they are continuously interrelated with each other when you increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere the global temperature will definitely increase and such global temperature increases in the atmosphere which is also called global warming so global warming is related to the uh, the percentage increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere which is also known as the global warming which is also known as the global warming because because uh, the global warming is predominantly caused by the carbon dioxide emissions all right let's understand the brief definitions the lithosphere means the solid portion of the earth on which we lived and it is called lithosphere okay atmosphere means the gaseous layer which surround the earth it is known as atmosphere okay lithosphere means it is the domain of the earth which is covered by the water body so it is called hydrosphere okay what is biosphere it is that domain or it is that zone where the land water and air together are found okay so where you will found all forms of the life where you will found all forms of the life so they are called lithosphere predominant solid portion of the earth atmosphere predominant gaseous portion of the earth hydrosphere predominant you know uh the water lime or the that portion of the earth where you will have the predominantly water on the surface of the earth and biosphere it is a narrow zone which is basically interacting the land water and air together where you will found all form of the life all form of the life all right let's understand the definition of the continent continent means it is a large land mass okay large land mass which is not covered by the water okay so it is called continent okay so you will have for example asia you will have you will have basically you know europe you will have africa you will have america isn't it so for, for example you will have the north america you will have the south america they are all continents ocean basins as i told you ocean basins it consisting of the huge water bodies and they are called the ocean basins they are called ocean basins because this portion of the earth is predominantly consisting of the water predominantly consisting of the water let's understand the strait strait means maine aapko bataya tha it is a narrow passage of the water connecting two large water bodies like seas and ocean right you have the strait of gibraltar right so like that you will have once you see the map you will find that the strait is basically the narrow passage of the water which connect the two large water bodies okay right all right isthmus isthmus ka matlab hota hai narrow strip of land joining two landmass for example the isthmus of panama the isthmus of panama which connect the two larger landmass so difference between the strait is the strait is a passage of the water passage of the water which connect the two larger oceans and the and the ocean for example you will have you will have the you know uh, the strait which connect the red sea and mediterranean ocean all right right and you will have basically the panama isthmus which connect the two large and land mass the north america and south america okay the plant kingdom means that part of the biosphere which consisting of the plants and the trees the animal kingdom means that part of the biosphere consisting of only animals they are called animal kingdom okay so they are called flora and it is called fauna okay it is called fauna let's understand the global warming maine aapko batai diya global warming means increasing the amount of carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is most potent greenhouse gas apart from that you may also have the the methane right you may have the nitrous oxide and apart from that you will have the carbon dioxide they are the greenhouse gases they are called the greenhouse gases okay the greenhouse gases basically absorb the temperature and which increases the global temperature and it is known as the global warming okay now let's understand the major landforms of the earth the major landforms means they are in the form of the land which are found on the earth so one such landform is mountains okay so what is the definition of the mountain mountain is any natural elevation of the earth surface okay जो नेचुरल एलिवेशन एलिवेशन मींस जिसका हाइट होता है ठीक है सो एनी नेचुरल एलिवेशन ऑफ द अर्थ सरफेस इज कॉल्ड माउंटेन ओके नाउ 
now uh, they are permanently frozen rivers of the ice some mountains are permanently covers okay for example if those mountains uh, which are permanently covered with the with the snow or with the ice they are called glaciers so glaciers are permanently frozen rivers of the ice which may be found in the mountainous regions also right so the mountains are arranged in a line known as range for example if they are arranged in the line like that okay they are called range of the mountains okay the himalaya the alps the andes are the mountain ranges because they have arranged in a line they have arranged in a line in a series of the line all right so they are called the ranges himalaya is one such example right there are three types of mountains the fold mountains fold mountains ka matlab hota hai they are folded or their material is folded because of the compressional forces right so there are one force f1 there is second force f2 which has compressed this intermediate strata and this strata or this sediment is basically folded in the form of the fold mountains then you have the block mountain block mountains are also called host mountains they are formed because of either because of tensional forces or because of compressional forces once you graduate to the higher classes you will learn more about the block mountains right volcanic mountains they are mountains which are formed because of the volcanic mechanism volcanic volcanic matlab hota hai jwalamukhi so jwalamukhi ke through jo volcanoes jo remnants of those volcanoes are also called the volcanic mountains they have their origin from the volcanoes okay and the fold mountains when aapko bataya the strata which have been squeezed and the folded in the form of fold right so it is also known as fold mountain himalayan mountains and the alps both are young fold mountains or both are the examples of the youngest fold mountain young ka matlab kya hai they are still rising they are still rising ek hota hai they are you know remnant remnant ka matlab hota hai they are left over portion that means they are not rising right but when you say the young means they are still rising but they are also called fold mountain so their combined name is called young fold mountain when you say the aravalli range which is lying in the rajasthan it is also a oldest fold mountain but it is not rising right now so it is called oldest that means it is continuously degrading or it is just a remnant which is left out and this aravalli range basically lies in the state of rajasthan to delhi right so it is basically the remnant portion of the aravalli which is also an example of the old fold mountain the block fold mountains are created when the two large areas are broken and displaced vertically for example if i draw one diagram you would better understand the block mountain for example if this is the area in which it is broken let's understand if this area is broken if this portion got subsided down okay the two the adjacent masses would looks like as if they are projecting up above and they are also known as the block mountain they are also known as block mountain and this is called basically the valley through the rivers used to flow and narmada and tapi used to flow this this valleys which are created by the uh, by the process of formation of the block mountains okay right and the volcanic mountains are formed due to the volcanic activities for example mount kilimanjaro is the mountain which is in located in the africa and which is formed out of the volcanic eruptions all right let's understand the plateaus so plateaus you can say that it is a flat table land it is a flat table land but which is located at some elevation so you can say ultimately it is a elevated flat table land it is will it will be flat but it will be located on some elevation so it will be looks like this so this portion is called basically your plateau okay one such example is deccan plateau is one one of the oldest plateaus in the world the tibet plateau is the highest plateau in the world because it is located on such elevations the african plateau is famous for gold and diamond mining because the gold and diamond are basically extracted in the mine from the african plateau and the lava plateaus are rich in basically black soil because lavas are ultimately these lava plateaus ultimately formed because of the volcanic eruptions the volcanic eruptions and these volcanic eruptions ultimately led to the formation of the lava plateaus okay these lava plateaus predominantly consisting of the black soils okay these black soils 
you know this lava plate you consisting of first of all you must understand they are predominantly consisting of the the lava which after erosion after erosion and sedimentation which has led to the formation of black soil and this black soils are very fertile in the nature that means it is also called as cotton soil cotton soil means it is used for the growing of the cotton so sometime it is also known as the black cotton soil all right so it is good for the cultivation but the biggest drawback of this black soil is that it becomes sticky it becomes sticky when it become wet okay and it will basically open in the white cracks when it become dry when it become dry so that is the only limitation with the black soil that it becomes sticky when it wet so it will be very difficult to work upon this black soils or black cotton black cotton soils and it will it will open as a wider cracks it when it become dry so in the drying season and the, the wetting season it will be very difficult to work upon otherwise these soils are fertile and it is good for the cultivation and the cotton the sugar cane are basically grown on such soils on such soils let's understand the plains plains is the largest stretch of the flat land plains matlab kya hota hai a flat land hota hai that means you will not be having the major changes in the in the basically steepness of the the region or steepness of the landform so that means you will have uh, you will have the minimum variations in the uh, in the in the basically in the elevations of a particular landform which is in the form of plains okay most of the plains are formed by the rivers and their tributaries so they are called basically alluvial plains alluvial alluvial ka matlab hota hai the plain the plain which are formed by the deposition of by the deposition of the alluvial alluvial right which is nothing but the the deposits of the rivers which when you know comes down on the on the planar areas they basically shed their you know uh, the sediments in the form of alluvial and these sediment uh, over the period of the time deposited in the larger area and it has converted into the planar areas and the indo gangetic plains are the most densely populated regions of the country is one such example it is one such example of the plains which are found in in our country india okay landforms and the people let's understand how the people is associated with the landforms the humans have been living in the different kind of landforms the different ways jaise aapne dekha hoga tribal people used to stay in some of the some of those landforms which are very very difficult to live for example in the mountainous regions in the plateau regions right in the forested regions so people have uh, used to different type of plants in their own way so the natural calamities such as earthquakes volcanic eruptions storms floods are called widespread destructions to those people who basically lives in those landforms the surface of the earth is not the same everywhere for example you may find somewhere the mountains plateaus plains which are different type of land landforms which are found and uh, as i given you the definition mountain is any elevated portion of the earth surface right so uh, there are three types of mountains as i explained you in my previous slide the fold mountain block mountain and the volcanic mountains the plateau is nothing but the elevated flat table land which is the flat top table land right and which is basically rising or standing above the surrounding area right and you must understand the plateau may have one or more steep sides with a steep slope because it is flat table land which is standing above the surrounding area and deccan plateau is one such example of the oldest plateau the tibet plateau is also known as the highest plateau of the world because it is located in the uh, located on the elevated portion and the plains are the largest stretch of the flat land where the the steepness is very minimal all right and the plains are extremely level we you must understand and it are slightly rolling maybe there slightly undulating maybe there but they are generally thickly populated regions because they are they are predominantly consisting of the alluvial and these alluvial soils are much fertile in the nature and produce lot of agriculture uh, you know uh, produces and because of that these plains are you know heavily populated or thickly populated the human habitation is found on the different kind of landforms the population varies on these landforms also the mountains are generally not thickly populated all right and uh, why these mountains are not thickly populated because of the difficult terrain right the availability of the water electricity you know 
uh, different type of vegetables are also not there and it is very difficult for the people to survive in the mountainous regions okay plains are the regions where the population can easily survive the easily you know rich water ground water aquifers will be there potable water is easily available the people can easily settle without much difficulties and the the you know the habitation is also friendly to the human human population and the land is very very precious it is a vital asset and we must not use for the for the wasteful manner because you must understand uh, the land on which we basically survive and construction work whatever we we start on on any type of land should be carried should not be carried out on the fertile land because fertile land should be used only for the agricultural purpose or for growing of some sort of a forest or some sort of a you know agricultural crop which may be used for the human survival also and we should also not throw the garbage on the land because garbage on the land ultimately pollutes pollutes the water body right it pollute the land and it also cause lot of disease also isn't it so it is our duty to take care of our land and because land is a natural gift which is given by the nature and we can do this with all our consciousness because we are uh, the citizens right and we have our fundamental duty to protect this precious natural resource also let's understand these few terms erosion ka matlab hota hai dekhiye do three do terms hote hain aapke paas sabse pehle dekhiye weathering weathering ka matlab hota hai the breakdown the breakdown okay or disintegration disintegration in c2 in c2 ka matlab hai jahan pe hai wahi pe breakdown ho jayega jaise if i give you a one one small stone and if you break that stone in that place itself and if it breaken down it is called weathering so weathering elements of the weathering may be the wind may be the glacier right so these agents of the weathering will basically disintegrate this you know uh, the particle or this stone and which is basically if that is not moving from that side it is called uh, weathering and if element of the movement is involved the process is called basically erosion so erosion ka matlab hota hai the wearing away of the earth surface from one place to the another place through the agents of the erosion is called the process called erosion and it involves the movement of the eroded material the disintegration does not involve the movement of or the weathering does not involve the movement of eroded material all right mountain ki definition maine aapko bata di is a natural elevation on the surface of the earth glacier matlab you have some permanently frozen river of ice which are called glaciers range ka matlab maine bataya that when the mountains are arranged in the line they are called range okay himalaya or one such himalayan ranges is the example horse and the graben okay because of this because of formation of this block mountains the uplifted blocks are sometimes called horse and the lower blocks are also called graben right they are also called valleys all right let's understand a storehouse storehouse ka matlab hota hai building where the things are stored koi bhi storehouse ho sakta hai normal definition terrace ka matlab hota hai right it is basically terrace jaise apna dekha hoga na it is a series of the flat areas on the of the ground right which can be cut into the side of the hills like steps right so that these you know sides are used for the growing of the crops and there are the other added benefit that if you if you if you for example this is you know side which is steeper and if you make this this side into the steps like that okay what will be the added benefit it will also reduce the scope of erosion for example if the water flows it will definitely slow down over there it will further slow down further slow down so ultimately it will reduce the scope of erosion also and most over this this side which is much steeper can be used for the growing of agricultural crops also flora ka matlab hota hai the plant community in the particular area fauna ka matlab hota hai the animal community in the particular area where in which it is staying plateau ka matlab maine aapko bata diya tha plateau is an elevated flat land which is also known as topped flat table land right which is standing above the surrounding area and the plain means is a vast stretch of the land where the thick population can be found all right so we will bind our today's session here itself and we will meet again tomorrow right uh, with the new chapters all right so thank you very much for attending this session thank you